Uh. Hi, it's Chris here, also known as the Alter Ego, and I'm from scrunchablecadaver.com, and I'm here today to give you another of my uh, indie delvings in my A to Z series. Uh, yes, this is my quest to do a quick look of every game indie game ever made. Yes, no, no, that's not true even slightly. Uh, this is a, a rundown of, of the expansive uh, and ever-growing indie library that I that I have in, in my Steam list. Collected through uh, various uh, indie bundles, sales, general, you know, you pick these things up uh, as freebies and competitions and as trials and as, as all sorts. So, um, I've been working my way through. Well, quite slowly but fast enough for my life, thank you very much. Uh, and we're still on the A's. Uh, I think we've got another couple of A's, in fact. Uh, and today's game. What is today's game? Well, I'm, I've, I've turned the noise down on all of it. Um, to, to build tension. Is it working? It, no? Okay. Right, well, I'll flash it up. It is... Aquaria. And what is Aquaria? Well, I feel like such a fool. Where has this game been all my life? In fact, I've had it for years. Um, I have had it, I've, well, since release, I think, um, is about the best the best I can say about it. Um, I think, anyway. Uh, I picked it up, as I recall, to run on my laptop, laptop, which it does. My laptop runs next to nothing. It'll only run indie games. Um, but in this case, it'll run Aquaria, and I put it up with no sound, um, and played a bit of it and thought, no, uninstall. Idiot. Absolute idiot. So what is Aquaria? Aquaria is, I, well, I would say personally, it's a game very much in the style of what my game of the year is so far. Um, which is uh, Waking Mars, which is an iOS game. Um, if you haven't seen or heard of it, I've got a review up on the site, Um but it's an iOS game which is very much about exploration and pretty much in the mode of uh, that game company's games. So Flower, Journey, that kind of stuff. A uh, Flow, etc. And uh, yeah, so these games are about exploration, mood, uh, and discovering a world without any real direction, uh, if you know what I mean. So you'll, you'll know what I mean when I play it. I've played... Uh, uh, only a short time in the game, but enough to know that this game is pretty fantastic in many ways. As you can see from the uh, menu screen, it does have mod support. I haven't even looked into that, but if I go to the options, and I'm going to turn up the music ever so slightly, and I'll turn the uh, SFX down. Okay, its resolution does go all the way up to uh, 1080. Yeah, and you can go full screen, etc. I'm going to stick for the moment in uh, 1200 by 800. And I'm going to keep s uh, subtitles on. Uh, and I've auto me a auto target and blah, blah, blah. Key config. So it feels very much like a, a game where you discover more about yourself, discover more about your character, abilities that you can pick up, that kind of stuff, uh, to unlock other parts of the world. Uh, but you're given very, very little direction. As to where to go, I'll, I'll I'll put it up here and click my continue. As you can see, it says 13 minutes there. I've played over and above where I am here, just to get an idea of where to go for my uh, for this playthrough. Because I was very conscious that this might be a very interesting playthrough. Um, because it's a game so much about exploration. Um, so where we are at the moment is Niger, uh, which I assume. Is how you pronounce it. This main character's uh, name. Uh, we're in her home. Now you don't start off in her home. You just you happen to find it um, through the game, uh, and it's denoted on the mini map by a color. When we come out of this, if I double click the mini map to blow it up, there it is. It's denoted by a yellow circle. Okay, uh, and there are other bits and bobs that are highlighted on this this map. You see a question mark there. That stone is uh, a save point. Uh, and we're at another one now. So if I double click back on the map or single click on the map, that's a save point. So if I go and interact with that, I can save from that red stone. 
Uh, and I can fly about her her house. There's not an awful lot to see. I would say there's a stone here we have to activate to get through to this area. I'd say it's very much later stage content. Um, and y our, our home is quite big. There are bits of it that aren't locked down. Um, and here comes one of the um, the systems. So. There is a, a crafting system. It seems to be nearly all these indie games they talk about, there's a crafting system. I would say that's because the indie developers like crafting systems, like games, and are inspired by the games that have crafting systems. So throughout the world, you will pick up recipes. Uh, a hand roll, a hot soup, a plant leaf, red bulb, fish meat. Uh, these are very much more ingredients, I would say. So if I double click on a hand roll, I'll heal plus one. If I click on the hot soup here, uh, I'll get speed plus one, etc. And I can cook items over here. Drag two or three ingredients over and press the cook button to combine them. Drag food onto the X to throw it away. Where the kitchen have access to three slots, uh, slots etc. So that's in there. Uh, there's not an awful lot I can show you about that at the moment. Because I haven't, as you can see, I haven't got very many ingredients. And any recipes that I do have are really no use to me at the moment anyway. So it would be best saving the ingredients. So, oops. I don't want the exit. That would be a disaster. I want to return the game. So I can come out of there. Uh, the only other thing she has here is, well, I'll actually take you down to it because um, it, it opens up what little story that I've seen so far. Okay, so, oh, that takes me back up to the entrance. Um, the game is controlled by mouse uh, only. Um, so you basically click where you want to go and you click and hold and she will sprint. Or if I double click, she'll do a little push, etc. Um, so I'll show you this. This is her bed. And we get some flashbacks. Now, earlier on in the story, I met a mysterious person or a mysterious creature. Uh, and I got to do what looks to be a bit like a flash forward. Uh, it doesn't say that it's this character because she's very much different, different colour, etc. But I think that's what we're building towards. I could be entirely wrong. Uh, but they're in a very much crazy world where everything is very combat focused. Which is totally the antithesis of uh, the way the game starts here. So, that's our bed. So that was a little flash forward to that, that little section. And uh, we'll go out of this area. And I'll show you some other little things just before we go. Uh, abilities that um, Nigel picks up, okay, seem to be activated. If I hold the right button, I have got what's a s called a song. So I might do the Scrunchable Cadaver theme tune using that. Oh, it seems like I attracted all the fish. I didn't know that. Just by doing that, if I do that again, to attract all the fish, they love me. They love me. I'm like a Disney princess. Wow. Yeah, but uh, what you will get is indications of abilities and how to do them. Okay. So, one of them, or the only one that I've found so far is shield. So, it goes. And that uh, activates shield from myself. Um, right. So, let's explore this little world. Um, as you can see in the mini map now. Um, oh, well, it doesn't actually work if I blow it up. But you see the pulsing circles? They are, I would say, gateways or new areas, etc. Um, those kind of creatures don't affect me. The jellyfish do, as far as I know. So I need to stay clear of them. I need to stay clear of the bigger creatures as well. Um, here is where we get our ingredients for our recipes. Or a big fish. I would say that's going to eat me. Surely. Um, so what we'll have to do is see the, the flower or the plant there. I have to replicate its color uh, on by singing its... its appropriate color. And it pulses and pops. And this is where, yeah, the jellyfish hurt me. Ooh, and I learned a learned leaf pulse, poultice recipe. Uh, this is where the game's causing me some problems because <laughs> I am slightly colorblind. Um, I'm colorblind the original color, which means that there are certain groups of colors, or I would say actually most colors, but it, like most people, it's greens and reds, that when they 
are close together, I have trouble distinguishing between. And as such, it takes me a couple of goes to get those recipes or those bits and bobs right. So there's little, that pulse and blue one that you can see is actually a heal area. So I took a bit of damage on your own. Uh, there's things trying to attack me. Can I interact with that? No. Let's get out of here. I don't know what that's for. So like I say, very much an exp uh, a game of exploration. As we flow about, and I'm just holding, it, it feels <laughs> a bit like Diablo in that card, and that you're holding down the um, the direct or the left mouse button to direct your Nija or your character through the world. So, as you can do spins and whatever, to what end I don't know, but uh, she can certainly pick up a bit of a bit of a head of steam, so to speak. Um, uh, there's certain bits blocked off, like you can see there, I can't get through there. So I'll go back out here, and I did have an area in mind that I, that I wanted to explore. But as these things go, yes, it's if you can see down in the bottom right there, it's the pulsing yellow, is it? But I'll go up and round. That's blocked as well. Um, we've got that big eel. I'm sure it's an electric eel, which is. Whoa. Or seahorse. Alright, horse as I would say around here. Um and I can go back through this way, etc. And back to where I came from. Little cave. We can go around. Um I've tried to go in through that way. I'll show you because it looks actually very tempting and inviting. Uh, but it actually just leads to a, a dead end of sorts, which it must open up somewhere later on. You see there, there's a rock. So uh, I'm guessing that I would get the ability to smash rocks, etc. later on. And I'll be able to get through. So this game's right up my street. This is a chill out game. A just. Go to another place, I suppose, is the best way to put it. Um, you know, just see the world progress in the world. And I'm sure, actually, at some stage, I will become that enamored with it where I'll have to push on. When the story, I think, really grips me, I think I'll be forced to, um, to do something. There's another one of those rocks, which I'm guessing I have to smash. Um, things that I don't like about it, you know, I'm actually not all that enamored with the music. The music's very meh to me. It could have, it might be totally my favorite thing in the world in a, in a while, but to me, it's it's very meh for the world. It doesn't give me a sense of what the world is. Maybe that's just me being silly at the moment, but it's just very. Uh, it feels like a safe underwater theme, you know, the palm pipe kind of thing. Uh, and here's where I wanted to go. Where I was before. So this is called the Song Cave. Uh, and uh, I didn't go any further in this because I wanted to save this for a bit of a quick look. So there was something new for me. Uh, the music's not overly great, although it's changed themes here, which is something. Uh, as I give a little... Get a tour of this area. Ancient ruins lay the untold histories of Acaria. With exploration and perseverance, I would rediscover long lost knowledge. So it's foreboding. Um, yeah, will you see me going thumping for the soundtrack in about a couple of days? Uh, very much just. I really do like the art style, it, it, it feels simple. Yet, yet really effective. Um, as you can see, the backgrounds especially, I think, are, are gorgeous. Oh. The ancient door stood tall and resolute. It was ornately decorated with swirling patterns, but did not provide an obvious means for opening. I would have to search these waters to find its secret. Hmm. 
I suppose it's uh, it's uh, Metroid in a way that I've got to go find the key or find the things to unlock. And it, as you can see, they're not small areas to travel around. There's quite a lot to see and do in the in these areas, etc. So you know, I I could be searching here for quite a while. Um, it's a pity so far I've I've only got the one ability, but it probably speaks to you. Oh, and there's a little save point. So I'll progress myself from another 13, from a 13 minutes, as it says here. Um, I always think those save points are pretty naff because I did play for, I would say, about 20 minutes again to see uh, where I would plan and go for this little quick look. Or give me an area that I could discover. So these, this floral kind of stuff is interesting. I wonder if I die up there. Yes, that hurts. Ow! Ah. So I need green. So here comes my problem. No. That one. You're probably saying that's not even slightly green. Hmm. So not this way. I'm actually going to save again because I've picked that little bit up, which might be important. Um, this is actually quite good. It's giving me an idea of how long I've been playing this in this quick look. Um, oh, it's going to push me away. There are these currents that are somewhat determining where I can go and what I can do. So I can go against the tide there. That's quite cool. Um, and go around. So you'd imagine those stones have something to do with the uh, opening up. Alright, so there's another one. Alright. I'm awesome. Uh, but see, it's really helped my color blindness again. this game. Never mind anything else. Yeah. No. Oh. Ah, interesting, because if I had the escape button, those four little tiles, I think of the four things that I see. Yeah, these are the icons. No, they're not. But the iconography is, is definitely very strong. So here we go. Right, so it's... Point me that these are the things. So it's leaf, circle... Upside down. I actually think that oh, I'll use one of Steam's wonderful things, and I'll take a screenshot of that. So that's how we open the door. So where do you feed them to? So those ingredients must be here somewhere in my inventory. So the shield. Boom, boom, boom. That's how I would do it. Um, I can move here. Here's my ingredients. Eel oil. Uh, leaf poultice. Fish meat. I've got a red bulb. I've got a plant leaf. I've got all these bits and bobs. Hmm. Uh, next bit over is pets. So there must be a pet system in here. Um, and I don't know what these are. I'd say probably achievements or, or something like that. Who knows? So that's how you open the door. Hmm. Somewhat interesting. So I will have to go and find these items, I think, and drop them on the door to open it. I'm going back up the stone cave, aren't I? Yeah. So, yeah, Aquaria. Definitely, um, oh, you idiot. Definitely very different. And great for a little chill out and a, a great relaxing. Like these games just seem to draw you in to them. Like draw them into the world, draw them into um, the mechanics of the game. I mean, like you've probably seen, there's nothing to. Oh. 
nothing too scary or you know foreboding about this. Oh, there's no more plants around there, is there? There's not. Save again. Yeah. Do you know what I find interesting about saving? Seriously? Eight pages? I might as well use another one. So there's where the bit and bob is. Hmm. So if I go up here, I wonder if it'll give me another prompt. No. Hmm, I'm gonna leave it there while I go and collect. I would suggest collect more, more things. Oh, no, it's a song is what it is. Ah, so if I, uh, if I had remembered what it was, it was that, 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 and then another one. Uh, there's no way I can quickly pull up my, my um, screenshots, I think, at Steam, can I? Oh, I can. Oh, here we go. Free screenshot. Oh, come on. I need to see it bigger than that. I'll upload it. Brilliant. You can see my lovely steam bits and bobs here. Uh, it's probably a good time to stop but I'll, we'll see I'll open this door is what we'll do um, so what do we have we have the upside down floor and we'll end up with a star okay so if I put that away upside down floor which is that one then the circle which is either that one or that one that one and then that one so we're going bump 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 okay And there we go. Lovely. And the door opens. Oh, exciting. And we're in. And that is where I will leave it. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, this has been another in delving. Uh, next time out, we're still in the A's, so you can go through your uh, Steam list and see it comes after Aquaria on yours. Or what should and you might have a general idea of what's coming next uh, but for now uh, aquaria is a fantastic exploration little indie game um it's just real funny fun i mean very simple puzzle there um and not only is it simple but it gives me an idea of the kind of puzzles and the kind of things that that i'll probably be looking to do in the future like i say not very long in but i can see me putting a lot of time into this game um, in fact, I, I, I totally plan to. Much like I have done for most of the indie games, I, I, w I will say this. It's been so refreshing. And, and do you know where you get the um, the gamer fatigue? Or the game fatigue where you've been playing, especially AAA games. Uh, and the stories start to wear in you after a while. And the mechanics, the same mechanics, wear in you after a while. This has been incredibly invigorating. Playing uh, all these other games that aren't... They don't take themselves as seriously, I think, is the, the biggest thing about them. If they don't scream, I must finish this, I must do this to completion. You can, and there's an awful lot of value in, in that. Uh, but otherwise, it's it's just nice to be able to play some different games. That you really don't know what, what they're going to be when you switch them on. Much like Aquaria. I actually looked at it once and judged the book wrongly from its cover because of no sound and that kind of stuff. Um, and sitting here with my headphones on and... And experiencing the world and and the, and the beauty of it all, and and the tease of what's to come, uh, is really interesting. So until next time, 
Thanks very much. Bye.